Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of the Explore Chronicles. I'm Russell Darnell. I am Chris Gilbo, and we are going to be talking about the 2025 Explore trip that we had. How do you want to start this off, Russell? I mean, this is our first podcast. So first of all, to everyone watching, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, share it if you like. We would really appreciate that. Yeah, we we really need the support and we would really like to see more people um, engaging and being part of our little thing that we're doing here. I don't even know how we're doing this yet, so it's kind of just winging it today. Yeah. So the the goal of this podcast is to bring about different topics in a more relaxed atmosphere. So Chris and I have spent hours just shooting the breeze, so to speak, talking about explorers and board in general, cars in general. And we thought, let's bring that out to you, and you can watch on this is along with us yeah and since we're just doing this on our own all the time so might as well share with y'all too so y'all can see what kind of crazy nonsense we talk about would you like to talk about today's sponsor uh yes actually we sh- are being sponsored by explorer forum this a uh, whole adventure that we went on with the 2025 explorer uh to detroit was in part because of our involvement with the explorer forum um, so we got this trip handed to us by Rick, which Rick, if you're watching this, thank you so much. For thank this. you, Rick. It's been wonderful, uh, experience. Probably the best day of my life was when I got to step into, uh, Ford World headquarters for the first time in my life. So that was an amazing opportunity. So thank you to our sponsor, exploreform.com, an online website for all Explorer owners to Look about explorers, talk about explorers, figure out how to fix your explorer. Explorerform.com. So, yeah. So, we got this trip handed to us by Rick because uh, we have been involved in the Explorer Forum for many, many years. And uh, this was the introduction to the 25 Explorer being put out for from Ford Motor Company. And they wanted to let fans, social media people come and view the Explorer ahead of time and share it with uh, people online. Uh, This was a once in a lifetime opportunity for us. So we got tickets to go to Detroit. We got to fly up there. We got to stay in a hotel and got to see the 2025 Explorer basically uh, about a little over a week ago today. Yeah. This was the official press event uh, for the 2025 Explorer. So For those of you watching that may not know how this works, when an automaker comes out with a new model or a mid-cycle refresh, uh, they'll invite the press out to come preview the vehicle uh, about 10 days prior, at least they did in this case. And we're talking press like Motor Week or Motor Trend, Road and Track, these two crazy yahoos. Ford invited us out, uh, or invites them out rather, uh, to a studio or to a location, you know, that's segmented off. And the press can learn about the new vehicle. There's usually called a briefing where they go around and talk about the different colors or the new materials or the new upgrades or changes that they've made. And uh, little known fact, once you get, when you watch these videos where someone's walking around the vehicle and pointing out different things on it, uh, what you don't realize is they have about 20, 30 minutes total <laughs> with the vehicle. It is a, Organized chaos is is how I would describe it. Right. It was like super, super fast paced. Like you got in there, made your stuff, recorded whatever you could as fast as you possibly could. And then they were like, all right, next people going in. So. Right. There's groups that will. uh, It's not just like 80 people all at once. Right. They have certain times that maybe two, three, four, five people are in this group. And then they shove them in in the studio, which, by the way. There is a studio, a, a photo studio, in the basement of Ford World Headquarters in Dearborn. 
I didn't know there was a studio down there, and I didn't know there was a basement down there. Talk about somebody that's never done this before. I did my best in that 20 minutes period of time. Chris did like, amazing. Like super fast paced. So I know I like flubbed a lot of stuff when I was talking in my video, but you know, it sounded pretty good. So I did as best I could. So don't judge me too hard. And and that's what was neat about this is, you know, being Explorer fans, you know, uh, you know, we've been around the block a little bit and to have this experience where Ford Motor Company said, you know what? Let's reach out to the, uh, what do they call it? The enthusiast the community. Enthusiast community. Uh, and that's something that Ford's wanting to get into again. Uh, 20 or so years ago, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Ford used to do this. They would reach out and be a little bit more involved with the near hardcore owners. Right. And that was like when Explorer Forum had um, the engineers bring out the, the sport and the sport track when they were in still pre-production models to the four-wheel drive event. And they had a great time out there with the people from the forum. And, you know, the forum was the a big life-changing thing for a lot of us growing up. When I was a 19-year-old kid, you know, it was probably the only thing that kept me sane. Well, that's been a big part of our life. I mean, for those of you that may not know, uh, that's how Chris and I met. Right. Was actually through Explore Forum. Best friends for me over almost 20 years now. Yeah, yeah. we've known each other over 20 years. Yeah, and, you know, we've been best friends. We now live together. It's just, it's the best thing that I ever happened to me because, you know, my life is so much drastically better because of that. Yes, it is. Well, speaking of things that were better, let's kind of talk a little bit more about that 25 Explorer yeah. experience. So the 25 Explorer was, um, it had some good things. And some pros and some cons, and which we're, we're going to go over today um, in this podcast as well. Basically, just a mid-cycle refresh from the previous model year. The 25 Explorer is going to have a lot of great new features. It's a mostly a tech upgrade more than an appearance upgrade, in my opinion. And I think that you probably agree with me on that one, Russell. Oh, yeah. And I think Ford took the current 6th generation Explorer, for 6th generation being... 20 and 20 and up right now. Um, they took the 6th gen, the platform that it's on, and I think they massaged it a little bit better. Um, the exterior does look fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, I will agree with that. I do like the rear end treatment, how it, it, they added the light bar and it you know, adds wit to the rear end and, and some definition. Um, but the interior, the interior is where where the money shot is, <laughs> so to right. speak. That's where they put their, their, that's where they put all their cards was in the interior, refreshing the interior, making the technology much, much better for the vehicle. And that's what, you know, Ford is actually offering two infotainment systems. Essentially, you have Sync 4, which is based off of Sync 3 and thus, and now you have the Ford digital experience. That's the second infotainment system. That's what's debuting in the 2025 Explore. Right. And that's, it's mostly an Android based system. And now gone is the analog cluster. So now you have the digital cluster for all trim levels. It doesn't matter whether you have a fairly base model active. active. Gone is XLT. Right. You do not have the XLT. You don't have the base model. You don't have King Ranch is gone too. And Timberline is gone right now. We were hinted at a few things. Um, about a more off-roady model, but we did not get to see it, and there was no specifications on it yet. So, and it's not even actually in the order banks yet either. So, not yet, not yet. But it will. I, mark my word. Some sort, of, whether they call it the Timberline or whether they call it a trimmer, some right. sort of off-roady version is right. coming. There is an off-roady version coming. We just don't know much about. It. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, the police interceptor that was not shown either. Um, that's a yeah. whole nother, uh, that's a whole nother segment that they're meant. So they're going to show that to other people, um, later down the road as well. I'm assuming they're going to do a separate, uh, event for that. And speaking of police interceptor, so 2024, so the, the year current year, um, hybrid gone. Yep. So in, in its current iteration, two, three EcoBoost and three liter EcoBoost. Those are the only two out engine options. That is going to continue into the 2025. Uh, those two engines. Hybrid is gone. 
from the civilian market. Right. And hybrid is going to be only available in the police center software market. So if you want a hybrid, become a police officer? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> That's the only way to get it. That's the only way to get one until they hit the used market. Exactly. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about some of the technology that's in that uh, Ford Digital Experience. So the digi Ford Digital Experience is all upgrade systems. You get the all the games built into the 13.2 screen. Uh, you get Apple CarPlay. You get all the Android Auto. You get um, wireless. It's wireless. It's all out wireless. Um, it is going to be uh, 5G connectability. So you can basically stream netflix you can do youtube all that stuff while parked while parked safely but uh if you're sitting in your car and just waiting for your kids to come out of school yeah you can sit there and watch youtube now so and you, they showed us in 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 the little briefing where they had this really cool like screen a pot of screen they that these were parts that they took off of an explorer and they had it on display and um you could have a Bluetooth, like, PlayStation controller uh, playing your games. And they were telling us uh, 60 frames per second. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a 4K-capable screen. I believe I believe that. so. If not, at least 1080p. But, I mean, still, in your Explorer, sitting there playing a game, that's... And it, it's more like a living room than anything else. Yeah, because they put literally made the dash into, like, a big, long sound bar. That was so, the inspiration, I think. Right. And the B&O sound system is still uh, optional uh, with 14 speakers. So you have a lot of great audio quality. Another great thing about the uh, navigation system is you can now put the navigation system right in the cluster behind the steering wheel. So you get your turn by turn right there while you're driving. So you don't have to look off to the side. You can look just straight ahead and you can see it. So that's was a... A big deal because I remember when we had our 21, it didn't have that, and we couldn't it, you couldn't move the that over into that screen. Although what I found missing from even the, the platinum, which I have thoughts on the whole platinum ST, like which is higher now, but um, no heads up display. Yeah, that is lacking. I, I, I'm I'm betting they're gonna probably put that exclusive to the aviator. aviator. It's gonna be in the aviator segment so. which is coming the 2025 a aviator ford hasn't shown it off yet but uh it's coming and it's it's i think but, it's gonna look better but ford if you're watching <laughs> we would like to come see the aviator too <laughs> what's your favorite feature about the new explorer um uh, or change my favorite change i would probably say is the better 13.2 screen Probably that's probably my favorite. Trailer. John is the portrait. Yeah, I, you know that's actually a, that's one of those uh, those pros in my opinion. And it's like, don't let me get me wrong. I loved my twenty one Explorer, but I hated the portrait design. And even when I have people ride in it, they would be like, that looks like a tablet that someone just stuck up there. So I'm glad they did away with that because it kind of gave it a kind of that look like somebody just stuck a tablet facing upright in the dash. So I would like to bring up platinum. Mm -hmm. If if I may, if I can get up on my soapbox metaphor, please do, speaking. please do, um, get on that soapbox. So platinum, you know the top of the line, you know back on our uh, us old school explorer people, you know from the ninety three, ninety four, ninety five limiteds. Uh, limited used to be the top of the line, and then that kind of at least in the sixth gen turned into the hybrid uh, only model, which is fine. And then now platinum is like the top of the range, and the way that Ford has structured their trim levels, so. 2025, your trim levels are almost cut in half. So like Chris said, you have active, you have uh, ST, ST line, which is just ST light. You know, the, the appearance of an ST, but the... Diet, the diet, 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 diet ST. ST, yes. Diet ST, copyright. Um, and now you, and, and then uh, Platinum. So used to be Platinum Explorer, and this is how we actually optioned ours. Well, optioned ours. You had platinum, you got everything. That, that was it. I mean, you got a Platinum, you got every option. The only option really that you could choose was the color and the bench seat versus the captain's chairs in the, in the second row. Mm -hmm. What Ford has done now is platinum is now standard with the two, three. Yeah. Three liter is available. Mm -hmm. uh, but like if you want the bench seat, you have to stay with the two, three. If you want, and it's weird how they packaged the platinum where it's giving people more options to mix and match. And I wonder if that has to do with like a price standpoint. Like maybe they want to sell more platinums with less 
dollars? Or I think because they took away XLT, they kind of allowed like Active and XLT to kind of merge to right. each other. So they're kind of in between. So you have the active base kind of, and then a middle ground active, and then a middle ground platinum and a high end platinum. Right. And it's kind of like they kind of just flow together to each other. So I think that might be kind of the direction they were trying to go with. But then they kind of made ST like your, the your top, top of the, the line. So your regular, your full ST is your top of the top tier now, even over platinum. Right. And platinum is the only one that you really get uh, full leather yes. now because like the ST line is the Active X yep. with the cloth inserts, which by the way, the Active X, I didn't really have a much chance to. And I did get touch to touch it. It did feel better. Um, I'm not a big fan of ActiveX because it just feels fake to me. It still feels fake. Is but that clean? It, it's easily clean, but it does feel fake. Um, real leather does feel better. It just has a nice, softer touch. Totally. And the ActiveX just kind of just feels a little bit it's still rubbery to me, like vinyl. But it's just that's what. It, but in the in the 2025, at least in the pre-production. Models. It felt better. It did definitely feel better than the 21 that I wrote in that did have ActiveX. That it did feel better. And then the ST gets ActiveX with a suede insert. Right. And then, of course, platinum, you get full leather. Right. Now, the ST line, you get a cloth insert with the ActiveX. Right. Wrapping and color stitching and stuff like that. So, And then the active trim, you get seats. Mm -hmm. they, they come with seats. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you get cloth or just full active the active X, yes. Which I mean, the active one that we saw, pick you know, it looked good. I mean, it did right. look like a stripped down base. Like, oh, that's a yeah. Now, now the vehicle. the three vehicles we did get to see were the, a, a platinum, mm -hmm. an ST line, and an ST. Which, I'm still on my soapbox. Can we talk about the Mojave Dusk interior? Yes, we can. I will actually love the color that they oh. chose for Mojave Dusk. There are some negative points to to the Mojave Dusk on the Platinum that I am kind of upset about. Do tell. And it's the fact that if you want to get the Mojave Dusk interior with the three liter, you can't get the bench seat. And that's why I was talking about the packaging that they're doing the Platinums in. It's like... It's like... It's like... I... I Love the bench seat because I'm not a soccer mom. I do not call no a, offense to our soccer a bunch of there. kids, but I actually like the bench seat. And when I ordered the platinum, I wanted the bench seat in the second row. And it seems like Ford doesn't want you to ever order the bench <laughs> seat. It's like they they literally try to make it harder for you to order the bench seat in the second row. It's like captain's chairs only. It's like <laughs> Give us more options for that bench seat because that bench seat was amazing when I had the 21. I loved it. It was amazing seating configuration. So, and I never, because I never used the third row. But yeah, that's my biggest complaint about it. But that Mojave Dusk interior is really, really pretty. It has a, it's, an, it's a very dark brown. And it's just really, really pretty. And they do that tri-diamond pattern. It's almost like a purple brown. I mean, it yeah. just looks beautiful. Right. And then the other color that they came out with, which is that, I think it's crystal salt. Yeah. Gray, yeah. Think. Um, but the, it's a beautiful gray. It has a little bit of blue undertone to it. It's super soft because they had the samples there for us to look at and touch. And it was it's just felt really good. So I really like the leather on that one. So... But um, let's talk about what some of your things that you did not like about the 25 Explorer. What are something that you did not like? There's, you know, it, it's a mid-cycle refresh. So we're not starting with, with a fresh sheet of design. Mm -hmm. um, I, know the, I know folks have often complained about the size. And I can agree with them to an extent. You know, it's a mid-size SUV, but it has to fit in between the edge and the expedition which i mean comparing like say an edge today's port edge to a second gen explorer they're the same size i mean heck a, a, a new escape is almost the same size as a second gen explorer you know the segment has just grown and grown and grown but you know the third row is a tight space for an adult 
Um, the second row, I mean, I'm five foot eleven. I'm your average American height, but even I felt a little tight in the second rows, which I, I always have uh, in the in the six gens. Definitely in the second gens. <laughs> I can barely fit in the back of a second gen. I fit back there fine. Well, you're a tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a munchkin, so there's no offense to our anyway. <laughs> uh, but no, gripes about the the new 2025 colors. I wish, and and I know you and I have talked about this at great length. I like the design. I mean, the the rapid red looks really good on the Explorer, right. but that's the only like vibrant color. Everything else, and this is a this is not just the Explorer. Every new car, you know, you have your silvers, you have your whites, and you have your blacks, and various shades of those three. I wish there was more vibrant colors on the Explorer line. I really do. It's it's a sea of sameness. It drives me nuts, it's especially like, on the like, platinums. It's like it, the new color, the vapor blue. Not available on platinum. Yeah, only on the ST. Why? Which why for vapor blue looks really really good. It's a beautiful color. I I'm not painting on it, but I mean some like a, a, a green or God forbid like cyber orange. I mean, <laughs> and and the funny part is they brought in a green during the Timberline for when they did the twenty. 21, 22. Yeah, the, yeah. When they did that, they brought in that green and it was available on platinum. Mm, they went backwards. They went backwards and they took away some of the colors again. It's like, now I do know that some of the colors and, and we got to talk to a lot of important people at Ford. Um, but I'm just going to rattle off a list if, if you're. Yeah, go that. ahead. Um, Georgia Yemen, she's part of the, the services communications with Ford's. Absolutely outstanding lady. I mean, she is just so sweet. Um, the brand manager for Explorer, uh, Andrew Staley. I talked with him at great length, you know, and he even mentioned, you know, I, I asked him, you know, what's the deal with the colors? You know, why can't we get more private colors? And I, I, part of it is a kind of a cost thing, right? You know, the pigments that go into these colors has to be shared across the board in, at the Chicago assembly plant with the aviator. So whatever colors the aviator is running has to, you know, the same suppliers and things like that. And I understand that to an extent. But my goodness, a cyber orange factory painted six gen would just, I would yeah. fall over and melt. Um, Matt Duffield, uh, the marketing manager for Explorer, you uh, talked with I him. I talked to him a lot in great length. And, and I was even trying to convince him. I was like, hey, you know, realistically, would y'all start doing the seventh gen Explorer? Maybe kind of think about just bringing the Everest over here and just <laughs> rebadge that as the Explorer. Yeah. I would buy one. I would buy one. Oh, the Everest. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, for all those Everest fans out there, yeah, I definitely talked to them about it. So I know that a few of y'all asked me to do that, and I did. And then um, Kelly Clark, she's the chief program engineer for the Explorer. Again, lovely lady. She actually owned uh, an Eddie Bauer two door. She did. Um, and so I, you and her like became best yeah, friends. Yeah, we were we were like buddy buddy for a little bit there. So because like when she said that she owned an Eddie Bauer two door, I was just like, <laughs> she was like, why are you smiling? I was like, because I have one. No, you have three. You have, I have three Eddie Bauer. Yes, two doors. I have three Eddie Bauer two doors. Yes, I in have, various I, stages of running this. Yeah, um, but no, the the people there, and, and I know we're sitting here, it's like picking the Explorer part. The people at Ford Motor Company were nothing but gracious, nothing but kind. Yes, full disclosure, they paid for us to go out there, but even if we had paid our own way, I mean, they couldn't have been kinder to us. They couldn't have been more hospitable to us. Everyone was so sweet and so caring. And so, you know, do you need this? Is this, is there anything I could do for you? I mean, I get they're, they're launching a vehicle, but I genuinely felt that they were interested, right. invested in the product. Right. What, what I actually took from all this is that Ford is listening to the consumer. They are. And they're listening to us now. So they're actually wanting us to give them feedback and that's why me and Russell talked about this while we were on the trip and said, hey, we really need to start doing this podcast because we can help bring some of that voice to Ford Motor Company as well with your assistance. We, we really want to hear y'all's feedback, too, and let us know what you like to see in an Explorer coming forward so we can help bring that information to Ford as well. So I hope that Ford invites us back and does more of this stuff because i really like to go again yeah i mean the first drives you're you're gonna start seeing the media driving and getting driving impressions probably later this summer 
Um, if you don't, if you're not already aware, the order banks are open February 1st. You could go to your local Ford dealership and order a 2025 right now. Um, production is going to begin. Oh, that's a gray area because I'm big on the like pre-production stuff, but production is going to officially begin probably, um, they later this they, spring. I think they said June-ish. I think that's when they're going to start arriving in dealers. Uh, okay. production is going to start second quarter. So March, April, they're going to start building them. Okay. And then you'll probably start seeing them in dealers around May, June-ish. Yeah, I know I saw a couple people post online through some of the Facebook groups that they had already placed the door for their ST, for their 25 ST. So um, so I did see that already. So people are already starting to place orders for them. So, so if you want one, better place an order. What are your... What are your thoughts going forward on the 2020? Do you think it's going to do well? I think it's going to do well. I mean, it's priced competitively. Um, it hasn't really gone up in price from um, the 24, the 21 model years. So as far as pricing goes, it's about the same. So, you know, 41000 with destination charges to start with. So it's in a good median price range for, for a brand new vehicle. Uh, of course, you can max it out to almost about 60 grand or a little over 60 grand uh for like a fully loaded like st but i mean which is still fairly affordable right. for most people yeah there don't get me wrong i know there's going to be some people that say oh yeah new cars are super expensive but cars are still selling so people are buying them and that's what Ford even says like look when you're looking at some of these options and that's why they combine some of these trims they were looking at what people were optioning vehicles with they looked at the pricing that those vehicles were coming at, and that's how they set the pricing for these new models. Right. So, you know, when you're looking and you're comparing, you're like, well, maybe it did go up a little bit. Well, that's because it's getting more standard equipment. You're getting adaptive cruise control standard. You're getting heated seats standard. You're getting the 12 point, uh, the 12.3 inch LCD instrument cluster and the 13.2 inch LCD uh, infotainment screen standard across the board. Right. So you're getting more options standard than when you were, you know, piece bailing it together. And if you compare like the like the two three EcoBoost, the four cylinder, to the V six uh, Hyundai Palisade, you know, as far as that goes, you know, it puts out better horsepower than the V six in the Hyundai. So you're getting a more fuel efficient engine with more horsepower, and you still get a better vehicle. And I, I mean, granted, in my opinion, so I might have a little bit of a bias, but I do feel that the Explorer looks better. Yeah, it does look than better. the competition. It, it does look really good, and it's rear drive. It is still a rear drive vehicle, so a lot with of people four wheel drive options with four wheel drive options. So, you know, most you know vehicles that side, you're getting a front wheel drive vehicle with an all wheel drive option to give power to the rear. It's the opposite. It's rear wheel drive with a front with front wheel power. Or four wheel drive, and if it's anything like R twenty one, it's going to be fun to drive. It, and it does; they do. They really ride really nice. They they cruise really smooth. They're quiet on the cabins. Um, there was a few little rattles in R twenty one that annoyed me, but they weren't bad. I mean, they were, as far as the quietness goes, it was quieter than anything else we owned. Yeah, that's true. Quieter than my Lincoln. Yeah, I mean, it rode nice. It was quiet. It's very nice to ride in. So, and plenty of room for all your friends and. And their gear and yeah. your cats and yeah, Dusty would love to ride in it. Dusty is our cat, lovely cat. Well, on that high note, um, if you like this video, if you made it this far, thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, if you have questions about the 2025 Explorer, if you have questions for us, leave them in the comments below. Uh, like, subscribe, share. Uh, again, we're trying to grow our channel, right? And if you have a topic that you would like us to talk about or give you more information on please reach out to us we would love to make a video specifically with some uh tailored content to our clientele or our basically our viewers well um just a kind of a preview of some things that we're going to talk about soon um explore history because everyone loves history um five o swaps for all you first and second gen people out there how to do them we have the answer stay tuned um, just Wait, general how, debauchery. How many five liter swaps have we done? Um, we have uh, done around like seven, eight, eight around. I think eight because we have the five liter sport track Salem. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have the five liter Jurassic Park Explorer. We've done two other sport track five liter swaps, mm -hmm. and I think like there and there's two other second gen swaps we did. Um, so yeah, we've done 
quite a few. So, so yeah, we got lots of things planned. We'll and, we're, also... and we're in the middle of doing a, a 92 frame off restoration with a five liter swap as well. Oh yeah, that's the other five liter. That's right. Powder coated frame. It looks great. Uh, so yeah, if you have a topic you want us to, to discuss or ask us about, please comment below. But other than that, I'm Russell Darnell. And I'm Chris Gilbo. And this has been the Explorer Chronicles, episode two. Thank you for watching. See you soon.